A lot of people talk, and most don't know what they're talking about. But when it comes to the word of God, those who know, do know. There's fire in the chat. What's that life been like, my brothers and sisters? This is none other than your brother, XL Will, be reporting to you live from this side of mine with fire in the chat. And so we take these biblical passages, break them down brick by brick, giving you the heat rocks from the rock, God Almighty, applying them to our daily lives. So today, we're in Acts chapter 3, verse 6, and it says, And Peter said, Silver and gold I have none, but what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk, fool. No, <laughs> he didn't say it like that. What he was saying, he said, walk. But let me give you some backstory on this very verse and why this verse means so much to me. So the backstory of this is that they're talking to a man who was lame or who was crippled or handicapped since birth. And someone, and never names who, picks the person up, brings them to the front of the temple gates called Beautiful, and sits them there, because people going in and out there, there's heavy traffic in this temple, I would think, and Peter and John are walking through there, and this man notices they coming, but I take it he puts his head down because after he asked Peter and John to help him out son, Peter says, look at me. So that lets me know the guy seen him, kept his head down, then looked up once Peter said, look at me, thinking he was going to get some out of the deal. And then Peter goes off with the verse six that we just recited. Silver and gold, I have none, but what I have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. And I have a special place in my heart for this very verse because it helped me to stop giving change to people who beg in front of gas stations. <laughs> hey, as brutal as it is, I started using that verse religiously. Man, but the thing about it is, I wanted to look at the aftermath of when Peter told him then, gave him his hand, and the man began to get up and walk. Not just walk, but they say the man was jumping, praising, walking with Peter and John. I think Peter and John was walking through there like Jay-Z and Kanye. And the, the lame man, the healed man, was walking around there like James Brown. He said, I may not have what I want, but I got what I need. <laughs> what, what I need. <laughs> I feel like he was like, got what you need. <laughs> And hey, I just, I, I'm silly. That's what I do. But at the same time, that's what I feel like this lame man. Because it says he was walking with Peter and John, praising, kicking, and all this stuff. And everybody was like, yo, that's that dude that be out front asking for change, man. Yeah, but that's him. But now he's healed. And he like, forget what they talking about, man. I can walk. And I feel like that's what it is when we go, we go to God. God may not always answer our prayers the way we expect him to answer them because his plan is infinite. His plan is eternal. His plan is bigger than what we know. We, it's past our comprehension. So, unless we're in tune with God to a point where he chooses to reveal those things to us and we're able to accept and receive the type of revelations he gives us, it's not going to look like we want it to because we're still going to be thinking with a carnal mind. We're still going to be thinking at a human level. We're not going to be thinking the thoughts of God until we start to think the thoughts of God. Get the mind of Christ. You dig what I'm saying? Dig what I'm saying. So long story short, God may not always give you what you want, but if you trust him, he's going to give you what you need. Blessings and all.